clicked it. Hello! Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Checking audio levels. Well, that seems fine. Can someone eavesdrop on the live stream and make sure it sounds okay? They had a lot of updates to Streamlabs. I had to make sure everything was working today. Boy. Mm. We're Less not live for me yet. Like, we're live, but we're not live for me yet, so. I'm watching an ad. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, <laughs> cool. give me those two pennies and add revenue. Predator hunting grounds. Hold up, sorry. It's oh, yeah, there we are. you're good. You're good. Perfect. Hello, everyone, oh, no. and welcome back. We know that it's been a hot minute since we got a chance to stream, but the it's world been. is upside down, and the president wants us to inject bleach. So we're just gonna play it as we can. Yeah. Last time, we left our lovable rogues scattered throughout the city as they go to tackle their own objectives and see to things that need to be seen to. Quickly, let's uh, go around the horn and just say where your character is, uh, starting with Savvy, then Spex, and then Thelen and Gragnar. So Savvy, where um. is Savvy currently? Savvy is somewhere in the city. She, uh, the end of last episode, she was walking with Ash to deliver a letter to uh, someone who could get it to Master Theris. But um, as Master Theris does not want anyone to know who can contact him, uh, Savvy was only allowed to go part way. Uh, so that's... I'm not 100% sure where exactly Savvy is, but she's somewhere in the city. Uh, you had departed from Ash, and I do believe that you said you wanted to go find Montgomery as a last yeah. caveat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would be kind of heading back into uh, the wayward district where all the businesses and stuff are. Yeah. Specs, okay. where were you at the end of last session? Um, at the end of last at the end of the last session, um, Spex had a mini vision of sorts. When he was not himself, he was someone named Binks, talking to Master Theris about some shit. Um, and checking out of that, he decided to um, begin the be the begin the beginnings of their mission. Um, and he is looking to see who he can find so he can become the official per, um, entertainment for the auction. We've touched on it several times, but the city of Wuhan has uh, many revelries, festivals, and stuff like that. It would not take you very long at all. You wouldn't even have to go very far to find some of these places that cater more towards noble endeavors as that, concerts and things of that nature. And speaking with them can be pretty easy. So we'll say that you're there. Gragnar, you were at a bistro, correct? Yeah, we went and got some masks. And I think I am sitting at a bistro across uh, the street with uh, Thelen uh, as the target of something imminent. Thelen, you went dress shopping and you had just departed. Huh? Correct. Mm -hmm. Hanging out with uh, Jarm's beefy bodyguard. Uh, you would know that that half orc bodyguard's name is Nymar. Thank you. Couldn't remember. Perfectly fine. Uh, Basilisk has been missing for two sessions previous on his own recounting. <laughs> and we will get into that shortly. But our session begins tonight with Savvy. Savvy, you've departed from Ash and you've thought to yourself, I should speak to Montgomery. And you've begun to cross the city proper through this bustling district. Again, it's middle of the day. Uh, you've not done much with your day thus far. I think you finished breakfast only an hour or two ago. Yeah. As you're walking towards these inns and stables and things where people like to stay when they travel through the city, closer to the outskirts and these large walls that surround Wuhan, 
you actually bump into a familiar face near an apple cart. Juggling two apples, this person whips their head around towards you in an odd tilt and says, Savvy? You do not really remember who they are. They look slightly familiar to you. Uh huh. Um, Savvy's gonna do the thing where, like, it's it's there in the back of her head, but the name is not coming forth. She's just gonna go, "Oh hi." <laughs> uh, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, the apples fall unceremoniously as this half elf human man stops juggling and they roll across the ground on the cobbles and he comes up with his arms out savvy i didn't think i'd find you so easy and he uh stops the hug when he notices you don't recognize and does the awkward arm pats that's not quite a hug and he says yeah, so uh, i'll probably I'll, I'll I'll probably go in for like a half hug. So he comes he comes like like this, and mm-hmm. I come in with the one arm. Like hey, the <laughs> two of you touch extremities awkwardly for a short moment. Okay, and he says, "Ah, I'm I'm glad that you all got off the Umber Rose. I heard you've been making a splash in town." Okay, okay, okay. Ember Rose, Ember Rose, going back, going back, going back. Key uh, mind, uh, key uh, mind, key mind. Who is this? <laughs> uh, the telltale sign <laughs> that triggers you to remember <gasps> is when his teeth snap nervously. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, well, okay, it, okay. you look great. You know this to be Ulamar. Yeah. An assassin yeah, yeah, yeah. who bumped into you on the Ember Rose and you scared one another half to death. Yeah. All right. Yes. Um, then like the light bulb comes on and she's like, yeah, you, I'm glad you're alive. Ulamar, that's your name. He says, oh, it makes this weird hissing sound when he notices he's dropped and bruised the apples. He fishes oh. into a little pouch and you see that Ulamar is wearing very common clothes a tan shirt Mm -hmm. with a v-neck tan kind of beige pants boots flat bottom they look cheap disposable he does not look extravagant or anything like that but even still he looks remarkably better than the last time you saw him uh, shirtless with torn pants covered in oil yeah um yeah it's uh it's been a minute where Pretty bu- I'm pretty busy uh, with stuff and things. Why are you juggling apples? He slips the apple merchant to copper for the two apples that he dropped and picks them up, dusts one off and offers it to you. I'll take it. Uh, he says, I just told him they looked like they were good for juggling. The apple merchant has his brows flattened and is staring out past his black, bushy beard. Yeah. Well, anyway, have a good day. And Ulamar turns and, like, gives you that look like, this guy was a little scary. I got nervous. <laughs> he says, right. so, what What have you, What are, you said that you're busy. Uh, and you see that he's looking over your shoulder, uh, like he's spying on someone, maybe. And he begins to almost walk you backwards and he says uh, you said that yeah. you're busy okay. busy doing what um i was actually about to go shopping um she savvy will um can can i make an insight check can savvy make an insight check <laughs> uh in a moment yes but immediately okay. when you kind of check behind you you see that there is a gnome stepping up onto a box, a wooden crate, dressed in, like, jester's finery, but with a flat kind of hat tilted off to one side. And hanging from the hat is a blue ribbon that just kind of blows in the breeze. And the gnome clears his throat (coughs) and begins to speak loudly to this crowd that starts to gather. 
and he's getting people's attention. Pardon, but have you heard the latest gossip from the House of Belbar? And he's he starts unspooling these rumors and conjectures about nobles in the city. And go ahead and make your insight check on Ulamar. Well, it's not the best. Um, let me check my things. No, it's fine. Uh, insight, it's just an 11. An 11? He's real odd. Uh, he does seem to be acting unusual, but other than a life and death situation, you've never interacted with Ulamar. Uh, I would, right. I would be hard pressed to say that you even expected that his skin wouldn't be green. It's more of this kind of tawny, normal farmer's tan appearance going on. So, okay. digging into the finery of him is uh, kind of difficult. Okay, uh, but. When he sees that you're kind of studying him for this heartbeat, he leans forward and says, do you think you could do me a quick favor? Just a real quick little like two second. Um, d depends. Um, she's kind of looking between him and the gnome at this point. Um, it just kind of like depends. What is it? Uh, he hand or he holds out to hand you his coin pouch. And he says, can you just spill these right over? And he gestures right next to you. Just drop the coins? Yeah, 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 yeah. He says. <coughs> he bites into this apple. This is unusual. Okay. <laughs> You can effortlessly. Like it is, it's, it's, it's such a weird thing to ask, but I'm also kind of curious as to see what's about to happen and why he won't do it himself. There's a crowd of maybe 15 people that have come up to this gnome in the jester's outfit, and they're interested in hearing this gossip being spilled out about these nobles laughing and cackling to one another. It seems that they're in the midday malaise where they're not really wanting to finish their jobs normally. And when you dump these coins out onto the cobblestones and they begin to roll around, people crowd over and begin to collect them. Glittering silver, a couple of gold, and a small fight kind of erupts, people scooping up the coins. The jester puts his hands on his hips and stares down at the raucous little dog pile. Can you make me a perception check, please, Savvy? Sure can. Uh, that is a 16. You're always so good with perceptions. Uh, it's one of my best skills. You see, Ulamar takes the bitten apple and pretends to pull something from it. And he says, Ugh! Mealworms! Very loudly, comically loudly and throws the apple into an alley between the two buildings where you're standing. Okay. A moment later, he turns, takes one step, and thrusts his hand forward like he's throwing a punch. And the midsection of the gnome slides in two. No one knows what happened for a moment. They see pff, this fall to the ground, pieces of gnome on the box. And then everyone begins to scream. <laughs> and Ulamar, as well, screams. <laughs> and begins to run and gives you that side eye glance, like, get, get the fuck over here. Or get the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, um, am I able to, uh, <laughs> am I able to grab the scroll before we, sc we scoot? The, Which the, scroll? The gnome had a scroll that he was reading from? He was not. To read from? He was reciting oh. from memory. It seems okay. like he had pitched this several times already this morning. Oh, okay. You said you rolled um, a 16 on that perception check, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where do you go immediately? Uh, not in the direction of Ulamar. Uh, 
probably the way I was headed. You start kind of trotting, sprinting, running down the street. The crowd is also dispersing, running. Some people gather around to see what had happened, kind of screaming at this murder that happened in broad daylight. With your 16 perception, something stands out to you that is very, very, very peculiar, Sabi. Mm -hmm. You see a watch blade. One of the city's guards, wearing his plate armor and his regalia, does not even look at the carnage that just happened. Hmm. His head turns back and forth quickly, enough that you figure it would make him dizzy, and he begins to trot down the street, away from what transpired. Weird. Uh, okay. Um, and then I bells saw, begin I saw, ringing. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah. I did. I did. I see which way Ulamar went, though. Yes, he went straight across the street and between two alleys. Okay. The buildings okay. here, especially in this district where you're finding yourself closer to the ends, they're so tightly packed. Just some space between for garbage and refuse. Sometimes people sleep there, but homelessness isn't a huge problem in this place with all of the temples. Okay. Um, I think I will continue in my direction, but I'd like to circle back to the to the direction that he went. You want to make the block and cut into the yeah. alleys? Mm -hmm. When you make the block and round the corner... Again, people are poking their heads around at this point, more curious than terrified, now that the screaming has started to die down. And Ulamar kind of runs around the corner like he's going to double back and try to find you. And the two of you nearly physically bump into each other. And you see that his face is a little flushed, and he's like wide-eyed. And he says, that was perfect. That was per That was perfect. You did great. And he gives you a huge thumbs up. What the fuck? <laughs> he tilts his head. What? what? Why didn't you tell me that I was going to help you murder somebody? Savvy. I, I told you I'm an assassin. It's the only thing I but, do. But you didn't tell me that you were going to do it now. Uh, he looks upset. And he says, shit, I didn't. Uh, uh, he kind of bows a bit and puts his hands in front of him. And he says, I'm so sorry, Savvy. I should have been more transparent. I, it was a stroke of luck that you came. <laughs> I couldn't get that little shit to stop staring at me for so long. Right. Okay, cool. So here's the thing. If I ever run into you again, I'm going to expect that I'm going to be roped up in an assassination in some way. But just tell me. Okay. Like, I, this, I Are don't- Are you hungry? No, you gave me an apple. Oh, mine wasn't enough. Well, I, I ate like two hours ago. I'm fine. Hmm. So, I don't have anything else to do today. <laughs> we cut <laughs> from you, Savvy, to Specs. Specs. We need food. <laughs> Pulling up in five minutes. Go to Gragnar. <laughs> uh, we'll be done with you in less than five minutes. Uh, Specs, How dare you? you're in a crowd. Damn. You're she in a crowd a with these okay. people, <laughs> these revelers and dancers. This is a troupe that usually does parties in the noble district and in these areas. And you're beginning to get a repertoire with the people in charge. When you see cutting through the crowd, staring at you specifically, are two watch blades. And the two watch blades, they're not moving like they want to talk to you or to arrest you. They're moving like panthers cutting through low brush 
What do you do? Uh, a woman is thrown what? out of the way. They push apart two other people who are speaking. Oh, they're coming towards they're me. They're coming straight towards you. At the and... edge of this little stage where you're sitting in this opening between the buildings in a plaza of the city. And they... Do they... So I've seen a couple of watch plays now, and I've talked to a couple of them. You've seen many. Other than them just staring, is there anything that's given away, like, what their disposition is towards me, or...? Hostile, you believe, as they draw their long swords. Oh, no. Um, and almost like, um unknowing as he starts to like turn like uh, no the ground is going to shake beneath them like very violently as I thaumaturge the ground um having a slight eruption so like uh, no don't know what's happening He's gonna the go. whole Bye. crowd buckles and batters into these people throwing them off kilter do you run do you stay where do you go do you have any plan at all well, no, <laughs> because he didn't expect Watchblades, exactly. hostile Watchblades to come after me. He has no idea why, and he is definitely a flight versus fight person. So he's going to just like book it. Doesn't you know where he's booking it to. three options. You're next to the water. You can go up the side of a building, or you can go in the alleys between buildings. Those three avenues are directly open to you from where you're standing. He... Is going to go on a, on a climb onto a building. That's what he's going to do. So we see Specs watch these two watch blades push through the crowd, shoving people out of the way. They draw swords. The ground shakes from your spell, and you turn, leap onto a lattice, and begin to climb. Mm. Basilisk. Yeah. Perfect. You are carrying this heavy metal box. The lid is gasketed close with the head of Harval Wingrass inside. Mm -hmm. Are you in your Lady Elven form or a different form? Yes, it would be the lady. It, it makes, it, it just goes well with my nice satin gloves. There is a streak of blood coming from your forehead and dripping off of your chin onto the outside of this bright metal box. Your clothes are a little tattered. You're covered in dirt. You lick some of the blood from your lip and spit it out onto the stone. Inside this cavern, this abandoned mine, is utterly dark. There has not been work here this deep in this place for some time. As you go deeper and deeper into Hollow Mound Regret, it gets colder, damper, stranger. The three bodies that you've thrown down old mine shafts are well outside of your mind at this point. The ambush that was so hard fought that you've planned for all this time is behind you. And the relief I'm imagining is finally beginning to dull. And that little pain from the bruises and the scuffles kind of needles at you. But there's a strangeness here that I would like you to make a wisdom check to discern. Got it. And just a straight wisdom check? Just straight wisdom. Okay, 16. Perfect. As you venture into this place, you know where you're supposed to deposit this box. You're close. There is this sensation that you're being watched. There is not a living thing in here. Not a plant, not an insect. You see nothing. But that feeling of being watched is omnipresent. 
And not only is it omnipresent, you feel like you felt it before in this city. You venture down until you get to the place where the tracks split in three. Most of it is curled up, rotted, and abandoned at this point. But this is the exact spot where you're supposed to leave the box. There's an old minecart kind of set off of the tracks, tilted over, with some ore and deposits kind of spilled out onto the place. I'll just gently place the blocks down. Tick. 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 You hear. A person wanders from the darkness of these long abandoned tunnels. Their eyes are covered in opaque wax. From the eyebrow to the cheekbone is packed completely full with melted, hardened wax. They're wearing a robe, this female figure, a robe that has dozens of eyes on it. The eyes look in all directions and blink haphazardly. There's a blue paint and a stripe from her widow's peak down her nose, both of her lips, her neck into her cleavage beneath the robe. And she whispers, and the whisper carries in this desolate, quiet place. She says, My master, and bows. Basilisk, from the roof of this cavern, you see an orb. It's huge. That slowly descends above you. Stalks jut from the top of this fleshy orb, terminating in eyes that blink in your direction. And from what looked like a smooth orb at first, a central eye opens. And you see the gleaming teeth of a white, toothy maw that cuts across it like an axe wound. Yes, basilisk, it says. Hello. Was this your request? It was. Well done. It says in the darkness. I appreciated the gifts that you gave me, the payment beforehand. And you will get the rest of your payment. He turns one eye stalk towards this priest, cultist, this robed woman. She bows and scuttles towards you, pulling a scroll tube from inside this robe of blinking eyes. And she almost prostrates herself and hands it to you. The deed. He says has been a pleasure doing business with you. The real question now, Basilisk, he says. Will you be happy with this prize? Or will you go for the true treasure? Is that the last piece to the puzzle? Yes. He smiles knowingly. He says, you are sharp, aren't you? Quite. And I do love a good deal. 
There are forces at work in this city far beyond your understanding. Their traps are laid, he says. It's not my job to understand. It's my job to kill. And that is why I trust you with this information. There is no self-service, he says. But no. you may wish actually, to know. Bas Basilis is going to drop the elven form and let his changeling appearance out. You see that uh, the central eye that opened for a moment has since closed, and it's just the stalks looking at you. Thank you for the host. <laughs> just the stalks <laughs> looking at you now. And when you drop the form, the central eye opens again, almost as though this creature, this abhorrent thing, was being oddly considerate of your changeling self to not interfere with what magic hides you. And he says, so beautiful. There's a grin across Basilisk's face, uh, a look of, <sighs> the best way to describe it is someone knowing that they have a good future ahead of them. He says, You should leave here with the final piece of the puzzle. You should take it to your friends, so embroiled in this thing they do not know. I see no future for myself without your interference in things. How may I serve? You and your companions killed the demon. Did you ever stop to think you summoned it? The priest has gone back over to this floating creature that I'll say that you know mm -hmm. is a beholder. And she has taken one of its many eye stalks in her hands and is gently massaging it, rubbing it against her face at this waxy coating that kind of peels away and falls to the floor at her feet, only to grow back, melt more, this endless supply that seems to come from it. As this wax smooths over, and makes the stalk glisteny and shiny, even in this darkness. And he says, There is a creature even worse than me in this city, Basilisk. An illithid. Do you know them? It says. This is Gabe. Is this a circumstance where I can say I do and I would? Sure. Okay. Yes, I've never... Actually, he dropped the form. I've never killed one before, but I would like to, actually. He says, It is here. Looking to foil a plan a hundred years in the making. And I cannot afford it. Can you make me an insight check? Yeah, absolutely. Aha! 21. I'm good at insight. You see a couple of these eye stalks that have kind of focused on you this time. Cut off in random directions almost like it's surveying nervously. Oh God, this thing is nervous? Nope. Yeah. And he says, three, three acts, 
right now. Three, fight for control. All for a prize. All for a prize, I feel. Your friend Kragnar knows too well. Hmm. A prize. It says, kind of floating forward. Uh, the priestess lets go of the stalk as it pulls taut. And this creature comes close, closer and closer. A prize called the malediction. Hmm. Open the box, basilisk, he hisses. Open the box and see what hunts your friends now. This is the, the box with the head? The eye stalks point towards it. The box with the head. The central eye stares straight at you. I open it. You pull the latch, pop the seal, and open the box. You see that the head is perfectly normal. But where the left eye should be is a creature. It looks like an eye. In a strange sense, a twisted sense. If you were to look at it just the right way, it could appear that way. Some kind of camouflage. But little tendrils ending in barbed hooks crawl from the socket as this thing begins to grow larger and larger inside the box. The point of it, like a leech, like a lamprey eel, points in your direction, and rows upon rows of teeth come from a mouth seemingly that did not exist. It begins to crawl from the box, and a beam comes from the eye stalk of this gargantuan creature in front of you. It's so blisteringly hot that you feel your clothes could burst into flames. You have to hold your hand up to shield the heat from your own eyes. The box, the stone, and the tracks beneath the box are melted in a single pass. And the creature is reduced to ash along with the head that was inside it. It says... The trap is already sprung. They hunt your friends now, Basilisk. Find them. Find this creature, this mind flayer, and kill them before they kill me. And I will take you to the malediction. I will take you to endless opportunity. Basilisk's grin is a wide, toothy one for the first time. And you see him like stretch out and then slowly crack his knuckles. And you see the two daggers appear in his hand from the glove and almost as if he's conducting, and then they disappear. I will gladly put on a show. And then he bows, ever so gently. The creature uh, blinks its eyes in sequential order and begins to laugh. Uh, not an evil, oppressive laugh, but this laugh of actual glee. <laughs> and as it shakes it begins to lift back into this hole in the ceiling like a bubble popping that small little version of this creature that you saw two days ago pops into existence near you I will help you guide the way it says, with its one central eye and two little stalks that intertwine and wrap around each other and waggle. Oh. Lovely. A new friend. 
the wounds that had covered your body, the bruises that were beginning to show, disappeared when you took your true form. And they disappear again now, leaving you pristine, almost clean underneath. But signs of a struggle still present on your mind and on your clothes. Do you set back out into the city? The, the watch blade's armor, did I leave it there? If you would like to. I would like to. Mm-hmm. Because I want to be him. We watch Basilisk traipse back through the tunnel, and you cross this pile of armor you've stashed beneath one of these overturned carts. You pull out the pieces, and we see the shadow cast on the wall as your form begins to twist and change to fit the armor correctly. And then stepping out through the half-excavated opening to this mine is a watchblade in full regalia, wiping bits of blood from the armor. <laughs> Savvy. Yep. You and Ulamar... I just need to know where the two of you are headed, what you're doing. Ulamar seems content to leave you alone if you wish, or to follow you if you wish. Seems that his day is still up in the air. Um, I think I, I still want to go find Montgomery, but I don't want Ulamar involved in this. <laughs> so Perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, hey, you know, you said you were hungry, and there's a really cool cafe or whatever in vague direction. So why don't you go get food and I'm going to go do something else. He says, all right, Savvy. Well, next time I see you, I'll cut you in on, on. He whistles and moves his thumb in a slicing motion. It's not necessary, but thanks, I guess. He gives you finger crossbows and backs slowly away. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> See you around. I just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> As you walk away, uh, Basilisk, you see Savvy departing from this person that you've never seen before, walking in a general direction towards you. And that's where we're going to cut from the two of you. Because, Gragnar, you are seated at this small circular table surrounded by patrons in the shopping district near the docks of Wuhan. You see dwarven figures cut through the crowd toward your friend, Thelen, and you hear the rattle pop of weapons. But... Before you can really do anything, there's something right in front of your face. It's the size of a tangerine, held in a weathered, heavy hand. Clockwork gears grind back and forth on it. A central crystal inside of it gleams like a rainbow, shining prismatic light through all the little cracks and crevices and a button is depressed on the top of it. Can you roll me a history check real quickly? And you would have advantage Ooh. since you are Dorgar. Hmm. That one's a cock die. Okay, that one's that one's not a cock die. Um 23. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this thing being held before you is a gnomish grenade. It is, mm. <laughs> it is used for excavation and the destruction of magical hindrances and uh, deposits when mining. They're made and sold in the Underdark all the time. The old and, gnomish grenade. <laughs> yes. Who's holding it? This gnome guard grenade pulls away from your face slightly as the person walks around you and sits across the table from you. It is a dwarf with a heavy, murky-looking beard wearing immaculate dwarven armor covered in a cloak. 
Or recognize him? You would not, but you don't have to, as just a moment after his butt hits the seat, he says, Garhin Brightmaker, pleasure to meet ya friend. Is it a pleasure when you're holding that on such a nice day? That's for you to decide. We cut from Gragonar 30 feet to the left in and amongst a crowd of people to Thelen. There is a <laughs> pop of crossbows. There's warm blood on you as you see Nymar riddled with crossbow bolts. There are four in his back, two in his chest, and one in his neck just below his jaw. He takes one step toward you, reaches out a hand, grabs onto your sleeve with this resilience you barely thought possible, and then collapses into a heap at your feet. These nine forms that Gragnar alerted you to, not even a heartbeat before, turn, drop their weapons onto the ground in a clatter, and slink into the crowd as if to dissipate back into the city. What do you do? Check on Nymar? Like, is he, you know, still breathing? You take a moment, and this spatter of blood across your clothes and your hands, this protected bag that has your beautiful dress in it, spattered gently, you drop it, and crouch, and you see that Nymar is dead. He took 98 points of damage. That'll do it. Just, just a little dead. Um. People are screaming. They're running. No one knows what just happened. The crossbows seem to come out of nowhere. There's blood. People are screaming for the watch blades. What do you do? Do I see the... Can I look and see if I see the little tiefling mage that normally accompanies him? Go ahead, roll me a perception check. Look around. Ooh, that was real bad. I am very overwhelmed by this right now because that's a six. You do not see Robe, he called her. You don't see a watch blade. You don't... Like in this frantic moment where you're looking around to try and grab on to something concrete in this moment, you don't see any body. You don't see the dwarves that just assaulted Nymar. You don't, you don't know. And when you turn and look back to where Gragnar is seated, you see this sight in front of him, this familiar dwarf holding this mechanical device in the middle of this small table next to Gragnar's latte growing cold in the afternoon breeze. Is it a clear shot? Gragnar. This dwarf who announced himself to be Garhoon Brightmaker very quickly speaks to you. And he says, I even want none of your blood spilt. Don't see a reason for it. What I want, the man who killed my father, I want him. He's mine. He sips your latte. <laughs> oh, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, question. So I know this device. Yes. Does it work kind of like a grenade where you would hold the you depress something on it and once that's let go it will time off you know that they can be set to have a dead man switch yes i was thinking with my telekinesis can i hold that button down um 
man, that would be some some very fine control. But you could try it whenever the buttons let go. You could try to keep it held down. Okay, it's good to know. Um, so I would probably reply, um, your your father. Aboard the Ember Rose, you saw the person who took my father's place, held his widow's hand. I know it wasn't you. Your father, was that the one that was thrown into the mast? Uh, I don't remember a, a bright maker on the ship. You see his left eye turn an angry, unnatural, solid pink color. You're a fucking liar. Felon, you shoot. Go ahead and roll it. Like, how far away are they? 30 feet. Hold on. I'm going to take the disadvantage and throw the dagger that I gently stabbed Nymar with that he just returned to me. It's almost romantic in a way. And, oh, with disadvantage, that's still uh, 25. All right, Double go and roll 19s. damage. And you do get sneak attack. He's not paying any attention to you. I mean, why would he at this point? Oh, that was terrible. Oh, all well, six is on my sneak attack, though. That's nice, 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 nice. Thirteen. That one is mad. Thirteen total damage? Yes. Okay. So, Gregnar, you see from amongst the crowd, Thelen, I don't know how put together Thelen is in this moment, but Not. there's this sound, this whistling sound, and a dagger sticks into Garhoon Brightmaker's shoulder. He says, fuck, turns and looks at it. All right, I would, I would depress the, the thing if he let go at all. Uh, he does not seem to let go. Okay. Though the dagger sticks into his shoulder, he does not seem overly wounded by it. How does he react? Does he look like he's going to go over there? <laughs> no, uh, he leans kind of toward you and you see the dagger move kind of angrily in this wound and he says if you bring me the one killed my father i'll make it worth your while dragar i'll give you iron Probably. dross i'll give you our mine i don't care i want the murderer he says and he stands knocking the chair over and turns as if he's going to leave. Do you try to stop him or anything? Uh, so he stands up. He's got a grenade in his hand. And he's just been hit by a dagger from my comrade. Um, I would I would probably, uh, I'd say, I don't want the mine. I want something more. You have I, it. Bring me the killer and you'll have it. He says, he turns, Thelen, and throws the grenade. Fuck. <laughs> now, you see this orb coming at you. It's glowing rainbow bright. You can have this too, he throws. Uh, Kragnar. <laughs> it's like 2 p.m., man. This... There's people out here. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of people. This is going to be an intelligence check. You can add your proficiency modifier because you've had a few moments to really consider grabbing this grenade. If you okay. succeed, you will stop it in midair and keep the button depressed. If you fail, it will travel to its distance, land at Thelen's feet, and explode. But if I miss, can I, like, swipe it into a nearby uh, local business? We'll get to that if you fail. How bad right. you fail will determine that. How about that? 
All right, so I'm making a raw intelligence You're check. You're making an intelligence check with your proficiency bonus added on. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. And and I and I don't have advantage. All right, you do not have advantage. That is an 18 plus 2 plus 4. So that's a lot. 24. <laughs> yes, that is a 24. The grenade travels 15 feet towards you, Thelen in and amongst this crowd and then stops and slowly turns and you see Gragnar half leaning over the table with a hand outstretched like he's physically holding it and the other hand touching his temple Gragnar in that moment you see Garhun twists a band on his finger and is gone. Okay. <laughs> we gotta put this thing somewhere. <laughs> you know you know how to use these devices. You can probably cut the switch off physically. Save do you want to bring later? it back to you? Do you want to throw it somewhere? Do you want to detonate it in the sky? What do you want to do with it? Mm, mm, yeah, I'd like... I, I would probably... Uh, leave it there and walk up slowly um, in my, uh, you know, classic glasses hoodie, um, you know, incognito. And I would look at Thelen as I pick it up nonchalantly um, and say, must have been a dud. And then I would disarm it slightly and put it in my bag for later. <laughs> when you're holding this grenade, I would like you to make a rudimentary sleight of hand check. That's based off Dex, right? It is. <laughs> it would be your sleight of hand bonus on your sheet. You got this, Gragnar. Okay, that's a 16. And I have a... I think I still have a negative one. Yes, yeah, so a 16, negative one, 15. Yeah. A 15 is the exact number <laughs> you need <laughs> to disarm this active grenade. When oh, you my do... hands are really sweaty. <laughs> When you do, the light slowly dims from the crystal on the inside of it, and the gears stop turning. Hmm. I uh, look down at Nymar. I say, um, what happened to him? Right maker. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Uh, it was 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 he was Nymar stabbed to death? He Nymar was shot, shot full of crossbow cross arrows. So he's got just tons of crossbows in him. Yes. Okay. Well, that's why I'm the party mastermind. <laughs> Looks like a crossbow wound. <laughs> um, we should probably get out of here. The square is almost abandoned at this point. It's been maybe thirty seconds. Thirty-five. Uh, I, I would probably reach into my bag and take out the masks we just bought and, and uh, uh, look around and then put the mask on and leave. Dylan, what are you doing? I want to take him to a temple and also send a message to Jarm to let him know he's dead. So you're trying to drag this half-orc uh, far larger than you to a temple? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an athletics check, please. You see Gragnar no. looks around and just decides uh, it's best to leave. No, I'll help her if I see her dragging the body. When he hears <laughs> the bolts off. scraping across the cobblestones, he turns back to you. <laughs> Get help. <laughs> Get help. <laughs> Whistles go off, alerting watch blades nearby. The watch blades arrive shortly as you're trying to, the two of you, pull and drag and carry Nymar towards a temple. They at first draw weapons as if to slay you for this murder, but realizing who you are and your reputation in the city, they stow them and instead help. Specs. 
You are fleeing, if I remember correctly. I would like you to make an athletics check, please. Y'all, <clears throat> okay. That's a dirty 20, yay, that's a 17 in a day. You leap between two buildings, roll, get to your feet on the opposite, the flat top roofs here in this shopping district close together buildings they're all making things very easy for you at the moment do you just continue to run or do you try to gauge just, where these two are yeah he stops once he gets on a building and like a little across the way and he's like oh, this shit is happening what you lean on the building and survey <laughs> you do not have to roll to see these two watch blades are barreling through people on the street they're running full tilt. They're perhaps running faster than they should be able to. Their arms are pumping like machines. One of them is holding their sword by the blade in their hand. And the one with the blade in their hand leaps and grabs onto a stall, pulls himself up and tries to scrabble up the building you're on. Do you continue running? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So you run to the terminus of this building between two alleys and across a board that <sighs> crosses them. There are children up here playing and tending to a small garden. When they see you run <laughs> across the board, they scrap. Right, excuse me. You <laughs> say, excuse me. As a hand comes up the building you were just on and up over it comes this watch blade. Their knees are twisted the wrong way as they're on all fours and they begin to sprint faster toward you. You, being a rogue, are already very, very fast. But you're not outpacing them. Not yet. What do you do? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to get caught. You think if you run full tilt away from these people, they won't be able to close the distance. But you're going to have to do something if you want to lose them. They don't seem tired. They don't seem upset. They don't seem anything. They seem laser focused on getting you. And, and kids are up here. Um, this building's only maybe 15 feet off the ground. It's not a super tall one. You can scale another building taller if you wish. You're also near, like I said, that canal that cuts through the city from the dock that lets all the water out into the bay. Okay. Um, he is going to definitely continue to run but i think he's going to go down he's going to go back down to the street um because he doesn't want to trap himself up too too high um yeah he's going to try to get down perfect maybe an acrobatics check I can see how well you thing. dismount this building oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh. Ah. <laughs> this is stressful that's a 22. <laughs> So you leap down into a stall poof, and tip over with the fruits and things that were in it and begin to run. It barely stops you at all. One of the watch blades, the one that was on the street, gets caught up in all the things that are sliding off of this stall as its hand reaches out and you hear it poof, behind your head as it tries to grab you. As the drapery falls over it, it seems caught for the moment. Instead of a normal scream, you hear this guttural bone twisting <laughs> as it's trapped and reaching for you. The fingers seem to dislocate. It's trying so hard to grip you. The other, from the rooftop behind you, lands on its companion, tips and falls on all fours again. You're a good 30 feet away from it at this point and begins to sprint after you a second time. 
The sword is lost somewhere, but it does not seem to care. It is running full tilt toward you again. Here, however, Basilisk, you see that there is another watchblade coming from an alley nearby, walking briskly but normally. And when it turns and sees this creature posing as a watchblade behind you, it too tilts its head back and lets out this into the city street that echoes between the buildings. You pass it, and it too falls in pursuit of you. Can you roll me a d6, please? Wait, Basilisk or Specs? Uh, this would be you, Specs. Okay, you had said Basilisk, and I was like, excuse mm-hmm. Okay, d6. Shit. I'm keeping it, it's a five. <clears throat> Basilisk, can you roll me a d6, please? Ah! That's a five! Which I don't know if I'm happy about. Uh, you should be very happy, because that means that you see specks right around the corner being chased by this watch blade on all fours, scrabbling down the road after it, and this watch blade before you, tilting its head back and letting out a scream as it runs in specks' direction. And I said you saw Savvy. The three of you have, through sheer happenstance, found yourselves in the exact same spot. <clears throat> the three of you are on the scene, and I would like the three of you to roll initiative. Yes. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh Everything is fine. That was a moment. I rolled on a piece of paper, and it landed on a one, but the paper was tilted, and it rolled to a 19. That was my heart. <sighs> It's all fate. Oh, God. Oh, no. 20 plus. For for, uh, 22, for just my purposes, is is the watch blade armor essentially just aesthetic? On you? No, you have an AC 18 and no bonus to your dexterity saving throws. Okay, that just want to make sure. uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, disadvantage on stealth when you're wearing heavy armor. That's the only difference. But yes, your AC is currently 18. Perfect. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, less than 20. Uh, are you proficient in heavy armor? I don't I don't think I am. Okay, so your spells you can't cast, and you would have disadvantage on other ability checks and shit that you have on. Okay. But right now you're in a broad melee, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, under 20, but above 15. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, what did you two get? I see. <laughs> Five and an eight? Okay. I rolled really well, and then the one I needed to roll... Hey, you rolled really well on two that prevented you from getting your ass kicked for two rounds before your companions could see. Oh, shit. What the fuck is going on? Starting in this initiative order, Basilisk, you are <clears throat> the first to spring into action. What do you do? Uh, For the purposes of this, I want you to use your mind's eye to visualize this cityscape. It is is this metropolis, this big bustling city full of people. There are stands everywhere. There are jesters and stuff. These people are freaking out because these screams are going out. People are just trying to do their daily work, and they're running into buildings. But you can get where you need to go. If you want to be there, you'll be there. Just visualize what you want your character to be doing and what it looks like for the people at home. You can close the distance. <laughs> you're all rogues. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he's, he's going to close the distance. Uh, and as he sees the thing chasing Specs, stop, beast. Uh, so he's going to move up. Uh, and then as his action, summon the two daggers with the gloves and then throw them. Wonderful. You hold your hand aloft in these two metallic but oddly spectral knives appear in your palm and you flick the both of them. All right. So. Uh, 
and I'm, I'm rolling with disadvantage because I don't have proficiency in the armor. But it's still pretty good. It is... Where the hell is my attacks? There it is. It is 21. Uh, 21 hits. You hit it through the plate. All right. And I'm just going to roll my second attack at the same time just so I can save time. Uh, 18 for the second one. An 18 hits <clears throat> on the button. First one, uh, and the first one does get sneak attack, right? Normally it wouldn't because you had disadvantage, but I don't like okay. that, so yes, it does. Okay, I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, okay. So that is a nine. Plus, what is my bonus? Three. <clears throat> Seventeen. For the first one. Ooh, nice. Don't you get some assassin shit too? Yes, it says it has an act. It's, act a, it's a crit. It's a crit. crit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So we'll just double that, right? All right. Cool. And then does the crit count for both daggers then? Uh, no, it would just be the first attack, I believe. That's fine. Okay. So then the second one is six more damage. So you did exactly 40 points of damage on that attack. Basilisk and a basilisk. Very, very nice. Specs, you see this one in front of you? Starting to twist and change. The one behind you, you can hear, but you haven't looked at it. And then this watch blade, wearing full plate, steps out from nowhere. Stop! Makes two daggers. And they sink into the one behind you that lets out this whimpery kind of squeal. Very, very injured. However, the two of them pounce on you. No! One from the front and one from behind. Oh, shit! No! The one from the front rolled an 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits. And a 16 to hit. Yeah, that hits. The one from behind rolls exceptionally well on one and a nine on the other which misses yes so you get hit by three swiping claws didn't uh, even do anything the shit going on you take 33 points of slashing damage as they rake into your front and your back When the claws dig into you, you see. Oh, oh, no, 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 no way. Um, I need to know. Uh, uh, uncanny the, dodge. Yup. You can uncanny <laughs> dodge the one that did the most damage if you would like. Sure. <laughs> okay, so you would take. Uh, uh, just, uh, just give me extra. All right, twenty-one. What would you do? Okay. Uh, okay. So Hold you on. get was 33, six. 21. You get six back if you already took it off. Okay. Shit. <laughs> when these claws hit you, what what probably freaks you out the most about it is that you see the gauntlets kind of peel away and the skin and the bone underneath there it's human like these hands are crushed against you digging into your own body through the metal and the wood and the living parts of you just their hands are almost turned to paste as they hit you, but the damage is severe. One of them lets out a shriek after. And you don't know what that does. But it is your turn, Specs. These two things, one in front, one in behind. See from a character cool aesthetic standpoint, what I want to happen probably isn't going to happen. Live your dream. You only get one chance to be specs. No, well, well, you of all people know that's not true. Um, but no, 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 okay. nothing would nothing would peek through. He's just like, 
the shit. <laughs> um, and he is hurt. Uh, oh no. And uh, he will attempt to um, attempt to uh, um, take out his short sword from the one of the panels and like sloppily just like nah, just like rake um, against whatever one is here uh, for a 22 to hit which is yes. good okay 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 um, that max damage was good Oof. that is nine points of da- <laughs> max is nine nine points of damage um, and um I'm going to say that you attacked the injured one that had been following you. Cool. Great. Uh, and then I immediately, uh, nope. Um, as I cunning action, uh, disengage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as I disengage, you see from his spot, the shadow that was there forms into that necrotic energy and hits that same uh, creature. Oh, dope. Um, uh <laughs> okay 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 that's a 23 to hit <laughs> so it hits that is uh okay not the best but not the worst that is 13 points of necrotic damage what does it look like when this necrotic damage kills this creature <laughs> look in normal cases it's pretty and it's like I mean, it's really not pretty, but it's like something poetic. No, it's just get the fuck off me. And then he (laughs) runs away. This darkness coalesces from where you were and lances out, blasting into this humanoid figure with its knees twisted backwards and its hand a pulpy ruin. It flips him onto his back. He rolls for a moment and stops, clearly dead. And I'm dashing my 30 feet. 30 feet away. (laughs) Savvy. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I didn't move. I am 60 feet away. Okay. (laughs) But no. (laughs) Um, So do I see this happening? You see all of this happening. You see this watch blade materializing weapons and coming to Spex's defense. You hear Spex screaming as they claw into him. One of them die, the other still shrieking. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, well, I know the, the sound of Spex anywhere, so I'm gonna close the distance. Uh, and as I'm going, like I'm parkouring over carts and pulling out my rapier and going straight for the other one that was right in front or behind of Specs. It was in front of closest to you, so that's perfect. You whip past Basilisk like a breeze, close the distance, make your attacks. Uh, I'm only making one, but would it be safe to say that this thing does not know that I'm here and I have advantage? Why don't you make me a free stealth check? All right, I can do that. Nope. Uh, I made a lot of noise getting over carts and but stuff. But what was your total? It was a nine. <laughs> Ooh, it does have a passive of ten. Uh, it's okay. But yes, you can close the distance and you can attack it. Okay. Um, if I I can close the distance uh, with my normal movement? Sure. Okay. Then I'm going to use an insightful fighting. So it, this thing has to make a deception check. And I have to make an insight check. Uh, it will automatically fail. Nice. Uh, so I have advantage. Like as as I'm running, I see everything that's happening, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, so as I parkour over a cart, I'm just gonna like come down on it with my rapier for a number that is a lot. It's a twenty-three. A twenty-three hits. I got robotic. I'm sure. Twenty-three hits. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, 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 that's nice. Um, that is a lot. 10, 24, 27 points of damage. Damn. Okay. Uh, it, again, lets out another shriek, this time in pain, as you stab the rapier practically through it. Basilisk. Yeah. As I come down at it, I'm like, what the heck is going on? 
Specs, this is the first time you notice Savvy is here as well. You hear her voice cry out as she stabs into this thing that was attacking you. But Basilisk, it is your turn. All right. Um, and there's only the one left. There's only the one left that you see. It's gonna... Don't say that. <laughs> say that, you fiend. That you see. Uh, I'm just gonna, same thing. Conjure and throw. Give it a shot. First one, 17 to hit. 17 misses. All right. Second one. 19, much better. And 19 also misses. Ooh. It glances off of its plate armor as you see it whip its hand around and parry the blade. Plink! That sticks into the ground before disappearing. It uses its reaction to increase its AC by two. I can't even do that. Ah. Doing anything else? Shut up, Liz. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's going to look around and act like he's trying to direct people, like he's trying to be a true watch blade that cares. Yes, that way, away from the beast, we have this handled. Uh, people words, seem like, to not question it, though they are a little taken aback while a watch blade is murdering a watch blade. Savvy. <laughs> this one has been possessed by a demon. Savvy, from your perch atop this living corpse that's underneath you, uh, you see, opposite of where Specs ran from, as though from where Specs came, one more of these creatures, barreling like some kind of feral cat down the street, exactly like Gabe is running. Through its visor, as it's coming to you with its head tilted to the side, you see something crawling from its eye outside of the visor of its helm and spreading almost like some kind of moss or maybe a cephalopod sticking to the helmet and growing. Uh, uh, it screams uh, as it pounces onto you, Savvy. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it rolled a 20 and a natural 20. Both hit, right? Yeah. I don't know about your rogue stuff. No, uh, I don't. My None of my rogue stuff. Savannah. Savannah, you take 32 points of slashing damage. The exact cool. same that Specs took from these two uh, big swipes. Okay, um, I'm gonna uncanny dodge the the one that the is the most perfect. Yes. So that would be twenty one points of slashing damage. Okay. You twist at just the right moment so that part of the blow deflects, but you still feel it down to your bones. The like, one y'all have y'all have never heard Savvy like scream before. Savvy screams. The one that you attacked, Savvy, when you back away and pull your rapier from it, does not seem to care about the wound. It doesn't seem to care much about you. It simply cares about specs. It lopes away from you, provoking an attack of opportunity. That is a 24. A 24 hits. Ugh, it's only four points damage. Damage is damage. Specs, you look over your shoulder as it closes the distance to you and uses its pounce again to come down at you. Wait. 40, feet, 60 feet? 40 feet plus a 20 foot pounce. 60 feet exactly. Specs, good news. One of them is a 17 to hit. Does that uh -huh. hit? And the yeah. other is an 8, which absolutely does not. No. So it swipes you for 10 points of slashing damage. Lights out. <laughs> Would you like I to am... uncanny dodge? 
You had your yes. reaction back. Yes, you, you, do I? Mm -hmm. You had your turn since then. You're right. Yeah. That brings it down to five points of slashing damage. Okay. It's, it's taking these pulped meat hands that they're flinders and it's trying to grab onto you. It's trying to bite at you through this mask. It's trying to grab you any way it can. Oh, oh okay. Is it my turn? It is your turn. Oh shit, fuck. Okay. Um and it was only Savvy Scream that caused him to turn around. And as he turned around, he got pounced upon. Um and it's that that finally causes his eyes to go black as he almost shuts down and lets some and lets something else take over as what the fuck go away um no sorry. we don't want to go away <laughs> um and that flailing like robotic thing he's been doing as he's running it stops you will not get me today as he really try to just trim with his short sword. Perfect. Um, um <laughs> that won't hit. <laughs> it bounced on another one. It went from a 16 to a three. <laughs> okay. Um, but he is not thinking of that. He will miss and he will disengage cunning action, run back towards Savvy. Mm -hmm. um, as the bolt of necrotic energy attempts to hit him as he runs. No! It's a 13! 13 misses. <laughs> You're blasting and stabbing pieces of this ramshackle armor off of its twisted frame and see the person underneath is stretched oddly against the armor like a balloon blown up into a box like every piece of armor that falls away the skin protrudes from it like it was barely contained savvy he done yep it's your turn uh cool so the one that was on me went towards specs there's a severely uh, injured one that was over where Spex is. Spex is standing behind you now. And okay. this one that just pounced at you seems fresh as a daisy. Cool. Um, I'm going to disengage from the one that pounced at me because fighting one is easier than fighting two. Uh, and going to go for one that just tried to attack Spex. Give it a shot. Yes. That is a... What is my attack? I don't know what life is anymore. Uh, 22. <laughs> 22 hits. Yes. And there's nothing near it, so I don't get sneak attack, right? Uh, we can say that Specs will give you sneak attack if Specs would like to be standing next to you instead of behind you. If I yeah. got there in time, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would... I would go up, he would have stopped and turned back around. Absolutely. Oh man, she is not feeling it. Uh, that is 10 plus 3, 13. A good hit. Got anything else? Uh, on this action to disengage, that was my only attack. All right. Basilisk, we're back up to you. One of them is supremely injured and seems to be flailing out after Specs, chasing him down. The other that attacked Savvy has turned its attention back to her. You are still 20 feet away, safely guiding traffic and throwing knives. Uh, and they've both, like look like they've been hit pretty heavily from what I've seen. Yes. I believe so. 
Okay. You did hear um, Savvy scream for the first time. It's true. And uh, how is is the one next to Specs or just chasing him down? It is sixty feet behind Specs. Specs is outrunning it handily, I believe. Okay. Okay. That one is well. No, because if it's sixty feet away, I'd have to move thirty. It would still be. You can get there. That's what I said at the beginning. Okay. If you want to be there, you can get there. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna move there, and I'm gonna throw a dagger. I'm gonna throw the two daggers at that one. You close the distance between yourself, Specs, and Savvy, and throw a dagger. Give it a shot. All right. That's a 16 for the first one. A 16 misses. All right. Second one, 19. Much better. 19 hits. All right. For seven damage. It sinks into the visor of this armor as it spins back around to try and chase Specs. It lopes two times and it crumbles and slides across the cobblestones in a heap. Don't worry, citizen. I am here to help. There is only one of these creatures left standing. We cut to Thelen and Gragnar. The two of you have four watch blades accompanying you, carrying Nymar to the temple of your choice. The two of you need to make me an insight check, please. Oh, I'm really good at that. <laughs> 21. Nine. 21, what was that, Gregnar? Nine. Nine? Nine. Gragnar, you're a little preoccupied with things. The idea of trying to turn over Basilisk or maybe find a patsy. You're you're running these situations and these ideas through your head to the point where you're tuning out what's actually happening. Thelen, you're a little more caught in the moment. These watchblades that are carrying Nymar, one of them is checking on you as well and ensuring that you're not actually injured. But one of them, the one that's carrying Nymar, doesn't seem to be paying attention to where he's going. He's paying more attention to your face, and then Gragnar's, and then Nymar's, and then the other Watchblades, and then the crowd. And as though it's noticed none of you are what it's looking for, it unceremoniously lets go of Nymar's arm, making it drag across the ground, turns and begins to walk away. Excuse me, where are you going? And I'm gonna take my hand crossbow out. (laughs) You take out the hand crossbow. I, I don't. I don't believe you should be going that way. The, the temple is this way. The, the three Watchblades with you furrow their brows, lower Nymar, and grab their weapons, looking at you, Thelen, drawing weapons like this. But they also seem very suspicious as well. And this, is, this fourth... just riddled with crossbows. I'm just being careful. This fourth Watchblade turns back to you, And when it does, and you see this gleam of light from the sun through the visor on its eyes, these very pretty emerald green eyes, there's this strange sensation of movement that you see inside one of its pupils. I... We it have cuts a company. glare at you and says, I must go. And then turns and tries to walk away again. I don't think... I don't like this. How heavy is it? <laughs> the How cup. heavy is the helmet? The cup! It's always <laughs> there. What? How heavy is the helmet? Could I knock it off? 
Uh, if you would like to close the distance and knock his helmet <laughs> off, you absolutely can, Gragnar, especially if you use your telekinesis. I would love to use so my I telekinesis. Cut you off there. <laughs> yeah. I would yes. love to use my telekinesis. You topple the bucket off of his helmet, and it clatters to the ground. Strange breeze here. <laughs> uh, it seems to be a man in his 30s. Hmm. Little grizzled, a little older, salt and pepper. Hmm. No shame. Let me get that for you. Here, here's your helmet. And I want to study his face. Uh, you don't have to study long before you see what looks to be some type of stretchy, purplish, centipede-like thing unfurl from its eye socket. And it attacks you, Gregnor. Oh, yay. <laughs> I fire the crossbow. <laughs> Absolutely. So we will do it in this order. Felon fires the crossbow, it attacks Gragnar, and then the two of you fold into initiative. Yeah, it's, uh, ooh, we're rolling really well to murder things tonight. That's, uh, 25. A 25 hits. Murder. I'm assuming I don't have sneak attack. Gragnar's next to it. Oh, Gragnar is next to it. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and yes, uh, everyone's names got swapped around. Ignore it. It's fine. I'm Gragnar now. <laughs> 17. <laughs> 17 damage? Wow. I hide behind a curtain. Uh, you hide behind a curtain to the tune of a 19 and a 17, Gragnar. Do either of those hit? Don't even with me. They both hit. I really don't know your ACs. That's why I do ask. It's 11. It's yeah. 11. So you take 21 points of slashing damage. I'll take it. I'm guessing I was at max, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. When it does, again... Thelen and Gragnar, the two of you, for the first time, see it doesn't lance out with a sword or a weapon. It's, it's like it's disposing of its own body to damage you, to hack into you. Bits of armor slice into your flesh, the bone and meat peel away. It just seems to want to tear at you. So we're only realistically going to have one more round of combat because you have three other watch blades at your disposal but they rolled like absolute trash so we're going Wait. to start at the top of the round with felon then gragnar then this creature i rolled the d20s on my end uh, so felon you get to act again i'm gonna Chuck my hand crossbow to the side because I'm not reloading it and take my rapier that's not hidden for once in my clothes and uh, rush forward and try to attack this thing. Give a shot. I don't think I'm gonna. Uh, 18. An 18 hits exactly. Oh. -ho. damage very nice hit as well and I'm gonna take a couple steps back are you disengaging no I don't have to uh yeah okay Gragnar you see this thing has been wounded twice once by a bolt and once by a rapier stab it kind of begins to twist like the body that it's controlling is starting to fail on it. It seems injured. What do you do? I stab it in the eyes. The eye was weird, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I stab it in the eyes. So okay. I would manifest my psychic blade as a bonus action, pulling the frosty blade out of thin air, and then I would attack the eye. Give it a shot. All righty. That is a five plus, that's not gonna hit. Oh, yeah, you just get the one attack? Just the one attack, yeah. No All sneak right. attack, no. 
I'm still playing on the old version here. You stab at this thing's face and sink the blade in its cheek, but it doesn't seem to matter at all to it. Just straight through the cheek, through the back of the helmet, but it doesn't deal damage to this thing. Uh, and it's going to attack you again, Gragnar, since you're right next to it, still stabbing it. Hey, in the let's eye. see if it can roll high enough first. One of them is a twelve, which I'm pretty sure misses you. No, that hits. That hits. Okay, that's cool. The other is a seventeen on the die, so both hit. Oh yeah. Are you going to uncanny dodge? Do you have that? I don't know about this soul think... knife. Do we have that yet? Are we fifth level? Yes, yes we you should are. be fifth level. Oh, well then, yeah, I should have that. All right, you can uncanny dodge the first attack to take 15 points of slashing damage. That was half? That was with the uncanny dodge, yes. Mm. Yeah, it only does one one attack, not, not both. Okay. When it flails its arms into you and begins to claw at you, Gragnar, its mouth hangs open at an angle, and it says... You will be food. I taste your mind. It says as this thing opens up almost like a flower of teeth reaching out for you. As <laughs> three great swords descend on it with the three watch blades finally springing into action. Thank you. <laughs> Cut back to the other three. This last one standing, injured, wounded, its two companions dead. It tilts its head back, and you see the helmet slide off and hit the floor and roll in a half circle around it before it draws still. And when it screams, you can see that the body is beginning to fail. The bones are twisting and beginning to fall. It's as though the muscles are pulling too hard against the structure of this human. But this scream echoes so loudly, you cannot imagine the whole city cannot hear it. Almost an entire district away, Thelen and Gragnar, the two of you hear it in the wind. This preternatural sound echoing between the buildings. Deep underneath Uhan, the tunnels that lead into the quarry echo with this scream. It echoes again, darker and deeper underneath the city, into a chamber that splinters into five different directions. A creature there, standing next to this primordial puddle of purple and pink liquid, writhing around in the darkness. This bulbous-headed creature thin and willowy, clutching its long, clawed hands together, turns and looks out towards where the city should be. We'll make more. It says into the minds of all of its slaves, Find the Warforge. Find him now. People across the city hear it in their minds. Each one of them drops what they're doing. Find the Warforge now. A basket of apples hits the ground and rolls into the gutter as the apple merchant drops what he's doing and begins to walk towards where Spex is. Find the Warforge now. A street sweeper drops his broom and begins to walk in that direction as well. 
dozens of people across the city all turn and walk towards where Spex is standing. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session. What? <laughs> Find the Warforge now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. What? Well, it's not me for once. <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll yeah, be a I'm casualty. <laughs> it was a Most good likely. day for Basilisk. I got, I got a deed. I got, I got paid. <laughs> I got to yeah. meet cool people. I got a new pet. Like it's my, it's a good day. Wow, wow. Hang in there with me, gang, because next session, a lot of questions are gonna get answered. Mm -hmm. A lot okay. of things are gonna change. But are we about to have 10 million more questions to replace them? Yes. Maybe. Probably. <laughs> Thank you very much, viewers who did come by and hang out with us. We know that it's been a little while since we streamed, and we're so happy that you could come and watch us throw some dice and do some crazy <sighs> stuff. I tried to uh, warn the cast a couple sessions ago. I'm like, the last two episodes might be really combat heavy. So we went a little light on combat up until now. But next session, I think, might be uh, the most tense since we started playing. So please consider coming back for next session, which, barring unforeseen circumstances, should be next Friday at... We're going to say 5.30 PST, 7.30 ECST, <laughs> so that we're actually here. How'd you guys enjoy the session? Was it okay? I know it that it was a little so long good. in the tooth. You can tell I'm very pink and I'm very greasy. It is so, so hot. I've sweat through all of my clothes already. Did I, they I'm, not fix your air ooh, yet? No, they have not fixed my air yet. This is day two. I thought they were oh. coming today. That's what they said. <laughs> they were liars. Oh, they lied to you. <laughs> they lied to me. But thank you all so very much for coming. We're going to swing by and speak with all of our cast members in their actual order, not how they're displaying on your screen right now, so that you can know what they're up to and where to find them, starting, as always, with my good friend, Critical Bard. Okay, hi. Um, <laughs> Critical Bard. Critical Bard across all social media channels. Um, yeah, okay. Did not. <laughs> okay. Um, tomorrow, you can catch me <laughs> on uh, twitch.tv slash Beetle and Grimms, along with Justice and Latia, Yay. as we uh, so play excited. Justice's um, adventure. And I'm sure he can explain more than that. Mm -mm, no. Uh, Okay. But, uh, <laughs> and yeah, Latia and I are playing twins, um, twin Genasi, though different types of Genasi. Why? Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, um, other than that, I'm not doing much. Uh, most importantly, um, I just released my new subclass on TM's Guild uh, called the College of Acapella. And it is officially copper selling because how? Don't know. Um, it's on its way to silver, I would imagine. It's on its way to silver. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm like kind of discombobulated from that. It's so okay. that's me. <laughs> Justice, please tell us what you feel comfortable explaining about your session tomorrow and what you're doing with Beatles and Grimms. It's super exciting. Um, so we are playing uh, through an adventure that I wrote. Um, it's going to be two sessions, um, one tomorrow and one the following uh, Saturday. It is milk-based horror. Um, if you're wondering what that is. Say that one more time. Milk-based milk -based horror. horror. Yeah. I think the more I've said it, the more I've regretted writing the adventure. So <laughs> it'll be fun. Y'all are going to hate it. Um, but it's going to be fun. Um, and then uh, early next week, we'll be releasing uh, a Candle Keep, um, Elminster's Candle Keep Companion on the uh, DMs Guild. So it's going to be super cool. And it'll be the first time with a full color overhead map of Candle Keep, which is accurate to um, its current state in the Forgotten Realms. So I'm That's really excited awesome. for it. 
That is so awesome. Latia, where can people find you and what are you Hi. up to? Uh, I am the Lady T playing across all social media. Uh, I am doing, I'm hanging out with CB and Justice tomorrow, uh, like they both have said. Um, there's not really much more that needs to be said about it, other than I'm very excited to be playing uh, with such a fantastic cast of people, with such a fantastic DM. Um, other than, oh, um, first week of May, um, I think it's whatever that, that first week of, that first full week of May, that Thursday, I will be playing um, in a game for Jasper's Game Day, which is a uh, nonprofit charity to um uh, for suicide prevention etc cetera, etc cetera. i don't have all the information but my game is thursday afternoon i think um i will put more information about that out uh as we get closer to it but that's one of the things that i've got coming up so may 7th yeah that one am i am i playing with you yeah. i just looked up the date oh <laughs> Well, there's there's games going uh, there's games going all that week. So. Yes, yeah, from the second to the ninth. Yeah, That's so great. Uh, I have I have ran games and participated in games for Jasper's. If you've never heard of Jasper's Game Day or Jasper's Game Week, please check it out. Jasper does some amazing stuff. Yes, uh, uh, Fenway Fenway Jones, who has who started the nonprofit. She started it when she was fourteen. That was three years ago. She is a badass i love her so much so um come on come on by watch all the games donate there's prizes to be won auctions it's great so uh yeah i'll be putting out more information about that as we get closer to it and i'll be sure to retweet yay liz how you holding up you okay sorry about nymar listen r.i.p nymar it could have been me so i did roll for it I don't think Katie Dodge would have saved that. Um, but you can find me not dead at Raptor Handed on all social media, and uh, I will be watching the Milk Based Horror tomorrow because, you know, horrifying backwards knees wasn't enough. I need some Milk Based Horror in my life, too. Why is the backwards knees the one that hurts you guys the most? <laughs> I guess it was the weirdest thing I could think up, so that works. Uh, Gabe, what Hello. are you up to? Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Gabe James Games uh, on Twitch, Twitter, and pretty much anywhere else. I am working on a couple different things. Um, I updated my class system where you can do ability score increases by class, and I should have the rest of the classes actually done in the next two days because I've been pumping it out. I have going up either today or tomorrow on DMs Guild uh, the 100 list of rumors and conversations. Um, and I've been working behind the scenes uh, on a third project, which is a hero system that is largely inspired by My Hero Academia. It's currently called the Hope System, Heroes of Power Evolving. So I'm very excited to get into that a whole lot more. Yeah. It's been, it's been good busy now that I'm like Feel like I have my life together now that we all feel like we have a little bit of rhythm uh back into things yeah it's been it's been adjusting a lot better to the new normal adjusting to the new normal that's the perfect way to put it and I have that been your dungeon so master JB what about finally Liz? huh what about Liz we did Liz did we at Raptor Handed yes ma'am yeah wow. I complained about the backwards knees oh. that's right where was I for the last two minutes? <laughs> You're inside your head about tomorrow. It's going to be great. <laughs> Milk-based okay. horror. <laughs> oh, boy. And I have right. been your Let's... very greasy, very warm DM, <laughs> JB. I'm finally done with, uh, with my Twitter dark ages, and I'm back on Twitter full time. You can find me at Drop the Die. Thank you all so much for coming and watching the game. And we will hopefully, barring unforeseen circumstances, see you next week for the season one finale of the Little Rascals live stream. What comes after that will probably be a game run by Gabe because he keeps asking whenever Gabe chooses. And potentially another game run by someone else 
and then we should be back for season two. So stay tuned for those as well, everybody. We are going to kick a raid over to a channel I don't know who's on it. I hope that they represent. But if you would like to stick around for that, you can join the raid and get some extra channel points, which you can redeem for all sorts of cool stuff. I'm going to go stand in front of a fan. And until next time, see you later. Bye. Bye, everybody.